Good morning, everyone. We all ready? <clears throat> I'd like to acknowledge some people who are up here with me. The daughter of Diane Cusick, Darlene Altman. Thank you for being here, Darlene. Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder, Detective Captain Stephen Fitzpatrick of the Homicide Squad, and Chief Jared Rosenblatt of my Homicide Bureau. Thank you all. We're here to announce the indictment and arrest of Richard Cottingham for the February 1968 murder of Diane Cusick. Cusick was a 23-year-old woman, a mother to a young daughter, who worked as an instructor at the Wakefield Dance Studio, a children's dance school in Oceanside. On Thursday, February 15, 1968, her last class ended at approximately 7 p.m. That evening, she told her parents that she was going to purchase a pair of shoes at the Green Acres Mall in Valley Stream. She never returned home. By 10.30 p.m., her father and mother became concerned. The couple drove to the shopping mall and looked in the parking fields that Diane was known to use. They eventually spotted her car, a white Plymouth Valiant, in the parking lot near the Steak Pub restaurant. Her father, Bernard, went to the car, opened the door, and found Diane lying in the back seat. She had an adhesive band over her mouth. Diane's father took the band off his daughter's mouth and summoned the police. Diane was dead. She was officially pronounced deceased at 1.40 a.m. on Friday, February 16th, 1968. We have some pictures to show you of the Green Acres Mall and the crime scene taken as part of this investigation in 1968. Here are pictures of the Plymouth Valiant. And this is the original picture from 1968, taken from the police archives of Diane Cusick. According to the medical examiner's report, Diane was clad in a heavy winter coat. The medical examiner ruled her death a homicide. She was strangled to death, asphyxiated due to strangulation. The report also notes contusions about the face, her hands, the right side of her skull. There were sc scratch marks and marks on her right and left wrists. Miss Cusick was a slight woman. She was approximately five foot two and weighed all of 98 pounds. The person that allegedly overpowered, assaulted, and killed Diane Cusick is named Richard Cottingham. He is presently incarcerated in a prison in New Jersey. Back in 1968, the Nassau County Police Department worked very hard on this case. They followed countless leads. The Nassau County Police Department conducted many interviews with people in that area that evening and spoke to potential suspects. Ms. Cusick was separated from her husband, who cooperated with the investigation and was not a suspect. Unfortunately, 
Months became years, and the case went cold. As we know, there have been, been amazing advances in forensic sciences. In mid-2021, we received information from our law enforcement partners in Suffolk County that they were aware there was a person incarcerated who may be responsible for additional homicides in New York and on Long Island. Nassau County Police Department generated a list of potential unsolved homicides. Recently, in conjunction, in conjunction with the Nassau County Police Department's Homicide Squad and my Forensic Science Cold Case Prosecution Unit, we requested that certain evidence in the Diane Cusick case be re-examined. In early 2022, a DNA profile was gener generated and uploaded to the national database. We received notification that there was a match. That led us to Richard Cottingham, whose profile was already in the DNA database. We went back to the case file and the medical examiner's report. Although it was 54 years ago, we were able to speak to a retired police officer who was one of the first responding officers that night. We presented the evidence to a grand jury and they returned a true bill charging Richard Cottingham with murder in the second degree, a charge that carries a potential maximum of 25 years to life in prison. We believe this may be the oldest DNA hit to lead to a prosecution in the United States. It is our belief that Ms. Cusick and her killer were strangers and did not know each other. Based on the known cases associated with Cottingham, he has targeted young women. This case has prompted us to review all unsolved hom homicides involving women from 1967 to 1980. And although Cottingham was primarily a Bergen County person and worked in Manhattan, we now have evidence that he was also here in Nassau County and we are diligently reviewing unsolved murder cases. A number of people worked on this case in the last 50 years, including Detective Patrick Bellotti of the Homicide Squad. He has passed away, but I want to thank him and all of our law enforcement and lab personnel and partners who made today possible. Darlene, we never got to meet your mother, but I can assure you on behalf of everyone in my office and the police department, we are sorry for your loss. The pain you and your family have experienced the last 50 years is beyond our comprehension. Our best people are working on this case and we will get justice for your mother. Justice never runs out of breath, no matter how many years have gone by. <clears throat> now I'd like to introduce Commissioner Patrick Ryder Thank you. Good morning. 54 years ago, a young woman left her house to go shopping, a task that thousands of people do every day in Nassau County. She left a daughter left to go shopping, a mother left to go shopping, and she never came home because of the horrific act committed by this individual. I won't even use his name. I won't give him that satisfaction. But I will tell you this, the work back then was exhausted, but never closed. We don't close our homicide cases. We own our victims. Homicide owns their victims. They speak to them constantly to constantly find out more information. In this case, technology changed. Our witnesses finding an old police officer that remembered that original scene because they never erase in their mind what happened that day. That we're able to give closure today to the family because of the great work by the Nassau County Police Department because of the great work by the Nassau County District Attorney's Office and the great work of, of just society in general changing technology and working to advance how we always give our victims a voice. I'm 
Very thankful to be part of this press conference, but the real congratulations belongs to both the Nassau County PD Homicide Unit and the Nassau County District Attorney's Office and a very great DA that we're very proud to work as a partner with. Thank you. I'm now going to introduce Detective Captain Stephen Fitzpatrick of the Homicide Squad. As the District Attorney and the Commissioner have already laid out, on that February 1968, Diane Cusick was brutally beaten, murdered, and raped in that car. She had just gone shopping. Richard Cottingham used the guise of being store security, possibly policemen, and he would confront people coming out of the mall. He would accuse them of stealing something, and then once he got their attention and they acquiesced to his uh, supposed authority, he'd commit this violent act. As you all know, he's a serial killer. He's done this all through the tri-state area. In March of 2021, we became aware of it, mid-2021. We met up with Jared Rosenblatt, the, this, the ME's office, reviewed all the DNA, resubmitted it, and in January, like the district attorney said, we have our hit. We've also reviewed that time frame, all open female homicides during that time frame. We have identified several that we are looking at. There are certain cases that do still have DNA that we are re resubmitting, and we'll evaluate as we go forward, still investigating Richard Cottingham and many possible acts he might have committed. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Darlene, would you like to say anything? Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who worked on this case. Um, I never thought I'd see this day. I had given up. But all these people got justice for me and for my mother. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Um, you heard something about the Sunrise Theater, the drive-in, and whether that was a significant factor in this investigation in Sunrise Highway, and if that's something you're looking at for a place he hung out and where he might have struck you know, with other victims? Well, we know that there was the drive-in theater right next to the Green Acres Mall. Um, the police had received some information that he was by a drive-in movie theater, and that's what led to us uh, narrowing down the cases we were looking at. I have a question for Ken Jr., for, for Detective uh, Fitzpatrick. How do we know uh, about <coughs> the MO? How do we know that that's what he did when he came up to this particular victim? No, in speaking, we've spoken to Richard Cottingham in March with the district attorney's office um, in, in talking with our fellow law enforcement officials, uh, past uh, interviews that he's had with uh, private citizens. There's a doctor that he had uh, interviewed with as well as other, other people. As a culmination of all those, that information that's received from Richard Cottingham's statements, this is what we believe happened on that night. This civilian people that he talks to, he actually speaks to the daughter of one of his victims, and she apparently has helped law enforcement. Have you dealt with that daughter? And you speaking of Jennifer Weiss? Jennifer yes, Weiss. We, we've spoken with Jennifer as well as Dr. Vronsky. Um, they've given us very, very useful information. Um, they bridge a gap between us and Richard Cottingham. Um, we have spoken with him, and we intend to possibly speak with him again. Okay. Captain, further um, discuss the tip us? from Suffolk Police that led you to him? Uh, the Suffolk Police came to us and said that they were aware that there were possible murders in Nassau and Suffolk involving someone who was incarcerated in New Jersey. That was what led us to begin the investigation. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about the DNA hit? News they had done a story in 2006 um, that the police department had retested some of the evidence that was recovered at the scene, but that there were no matches found in DNA um, databases. Can you tell us what changed between approximately 2006 and now, and was that the same evidence that was retested again? Uh, it's technology that changed. In 2006, you needed a certain number of uh, hits on a DNA sample for it to be uploaded. That original in 2006 did not have enough um, hits on the sample to upload it. So it was never uploaded. 
Now, because technology has become so advanced, we can do deeper testing of the same DNA. And in this case, we received more um, matches of the DNA, which was able to be uploaded to the national database. And he was in the system all along. It's just that the sample, the analysis of the sample wasn't advanced enough until last year? Correct. He w only went into the system um, in 1982, when he was arrested, it was not required that uh, anyone give us a DNA sample. So it wasn't until he pled in 2016 that it was required that he now upload his DNA. So that's when his DNA went up, and then we retested in 2021. Can we know exactly what specific type of DNA sample it was, hair, blood, anything like that? I can't comment on that right now. Um, just from a, you know, a human standpoint, just wondering if it was overwhelming for you, Ms. Altman, to be in court today when he was arraigned formally on the case. If you could come to the microphone. What it was like to see him in this hospital bed being charged with your mother's murder. It was very overwhelming. Um, he just had like this dead stare. I felt like he was looking right at me. It was creepy to be, <laughs> for lack of a better word, and uh, yeah. Anything else, guys? Uh, I just have one question, I think for uh, Captain Fitzpatrick, for the, uh, how important <coughs> was the role of the police officer, um, it, it, you know, going before, then the grand jury, like what, what, what did he say that was used in, when before the grand, like, I know you, one of you said that he remembered it like clear as day, but I'm just curious how important his role too was in this. Uh, it's very important, I, I think. The district attorney can kind of spell it probably out yeah, better just, than I would. But it's just so interesting. To, it was so long ago that you have to tell a story when you get into court, and that officer is the first piece of the story. I mean, obviously the deceased is the first piece, and the evidence we have there. Then you have an officer that explains what he observed at that date and time, and documents everything that happened there that he was there. Captain Fitzpatrick is absolutely right. It is about telling the grand jury a story, hopefully from beginning to end. Um, and he was able to add that real-life description of what he came upon in 1968. One more. Do you, have any more? Do you have any estimates on how many more cold cases might be solved because of the advances in technology? Is there like 10, 20, 30? Uh, do we have an estimate? Um, in this particular case? So in this particular case, we have upwards of five other cases that we submitted DNA on. And we're waiting those results. Whether that's related to Richard Cottingham or not, yet to be determined. Could you just expand on the statements that Mr. Cottingham has made? Um, obviously, you found notice today, but has he admitted to to this killing? Obviously, he's said <coughs> in the past he's uh, been responsible for over 100 deaths, but only been charged. I guess now this would be 12. But uh, did he lay out facts in this particular case during those interviews? He didn't lay out a full admission. What he laid out was. Um, baby steps along the way that we were able to put together with the help of the police department to fill in that story that we knew. When you say baby steps, I'm sorry. Um, you mean like just saying I did something in Nassau County? Like what was the baby step that kind of... Right. Um, you know, he would describe, I took this road. I passed a drive-in movie theater. You know, and we had to piece together um, where he was talking about. When you said that, the drive-in movie theater? Yes. Well, 